Vinyl Community, this is Tommy, and welcome to another musical adventure. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something kind of inspired a little bit by James Griffiths. If you haven't checked out James Griffiths' pages or his uh, YouTube channels, go check them out. Uh, he's really great, and he does some uh, great work and really thoughtful uh, in his process and, and the way he, he does things. He's got two channels. He's got his main vinyl uh, community page, James Griffiths. He also has um, Beetle James, which is where he kind of focuses on the work of the Beatles, um, kind of separates it. Uh, both are really good, especially if you're a Beatles fan, you should do it. And so he's been looking at some of the solo work of the Beatles and been taking a very sort of methodical approach at the albums and looking at looking at the albums in a sort of way of where he's taking each song and rating each song individually and by doing so uh giving the album sort of an overall rating and i think it's a simple like four four star i believe or three star uh system where it's like classic uh great uh okay and indifferent it's not really you know so much a a, a bad or good song but uh, it's got me sort of in this sort of downtime um, that, that we're in right now. Of course, it's great for getting caught up on listening to records and, and um, you know, things of that nature. But it's got me to sort of rethink an album that I, that I was sort of dismissive of and have been dismissive of for, for quite a number of years now. And um, a lot of people, kind of particularly McCartney fans, Paul McCartney fans, are always saying, you know, you should really rethink that. It's not as bad as you think it is. And I think the reason why, and, and let me give you a little background, it's, it, it's Back to the Egg, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, um, one of the last Wings albums. Um, the lineup is uh, McCartney and uh, Paul and Linda, uh, Denny Lane, the longtime Wings member, uh, Steve Holly on drums, and uh, Lawrence uh, Juber on guitar. And so this, this album's one that, I was too young to remember when it came out uh, and to remember any impacts. So, so the album never had a personal resonance with me. Um, so I only listened to it, you know, coming in as a, as a Paul McCartney fan, as a Beatles fan, and re-listening to it and um, hearing it sort of, I won't say with fresh ears, but just removed from any hype that may have been behind the album. So, you know, and, and by comparison, like if you talk about like one of the later McCartney releases like New or Egypt Station, which, you know, I bought it when it came out. It was a new release and there's a lot of hype behind it, interviews and television and all the things that, that go along with, with new releases. Um, for for um, Back to the Egg, I didn't didn't have that sort of experience with the album. So so listening to the album, it was just sort of sort of a fresh thing for me. And it never really struck me as anything that I felt like going back to or, or, or revisiting or, or anything. Well, in, in the last uh, couple of months, I have revisited Back to the Egg, and I've discovered that my opinion of it has softened uh, substantially. Um, while I wouldn't rate it as a... Um, a classic along the lines of a uh, uh, band on the run or a or, or ram. Um, it's definitely one of the better Wings releases. Um, another friend of mine and I were talking about um, Venus and Mars, which was which was a huge release because there was a, a big tour that kind of backed it. But um, this album in particular, it came out in 1979. Uh, it's credited to Wings, so it's not credited as a Paul McCartney and Wings. Uh, Wings was a big deal at this point. I mean, they had done the, the Wings Over America, the big tour, the, the Triple Live album had come out, uh, Wings Greatest, and so there was a lot of uh, good good feelings about about the band Wings at, at this point. So the wing, Wings have become kind of its own brand, I guess. Um, and some of you people that were around or old enough to know can can comment and let me know a little bit about that but but you know the fact that it's credited to just wings not Paul McCartney and wings or anything you know, like this is actually wings the, the, you know my issue with wings was always that as good as any of the other guys were or may be they were never going to match up to the depth of McCartney as a writer as a personality or any of those things and so I, Albums like Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed of Sound, 
those albums to me suffer because they 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 kind of have this group unity thing, and um, you know while certain songs by by Danny Lane may be okay, uh, I don't I'm not, I'm not really really drawn drawn to those those songs. Um, so this album uh, and it's funny the uh, and I'll show you the. You've got Back to the Egg, and you've got the Over Easy and Sunny Side Up. That's Over Easy, and the Sunny Side Up side. Side one is the Sunny Side Up, and then Over Easy. Mine is a Columbia pressing. And um, so let's talk about the album just briefly. Um, this album was was kind of uh, a, a mixed thing. Uh, as I understand, there was a lot of hype that McCartney had done kind of one of the video albums that uh that people were doing back then so there were there were some videos that were as a promotional clips that were included um that it was done as a television special the album was produced by paul mccartney and chris thomas uh longtime uh collaborator and and great rock british rock producer um it was recorded um in london it was recorded in part of it was recorded in, in scotland um so different studios um and uh, let's see, I'm just looking over some of the things to just kind of um, talk a little bit about it. Now, now, one of the things to discuss on this, uh, particularly on this album, is uh, Rockestra, uh, which was this sort of grand idea that McCartney had to put together this all-star rock lineup, and he called it Rockestra, which to me, in, in hindsight, seemed just a little kind of silly and hokey. Uh, but the Rockestra featured, um, and, and the two songs that featured the Rockestra was um, the Rockestra theme and So Glad to See You Here. So there were two songs. The Rockestra theme was this sort of just big instrumental. Now you would think with this much talent or these many players um, that, <laughs> that it would be a little grander than it is, but it's just this big bombastic uh, rock piece. Um uh, the the guitarist on there, uh, you had Hank Marvin, Dave Gilmore, Pete Townsend. Uh, they were in the Rockestra. Uh, John Bonham, Kenny Jones uh, on on drums. Uh, John Paul Jones, Ronnie Lane, Bruce Thomas on bass, uh, piano. Paul McCartney, Gary Brooker, uh, John Paul Jones, uh, keyboards. Uh, Linda McCartney, Tony Ashton, uh, percussion. Speedy uh, Akay, Tony Carr, Ray Cooper. Um, and of course, the horns, Howie Casey, Tony Dorsey, uh, Steve Howard, and Thaddeus Richard. Uh, those were the the the, um, the guys, the main guys in, in, in the Rockestra. So, um, having said that, let, let's talk about the album for just a minute. And, and I can kind of break it down and maybe give you some of my, using, using uh, James Griffith's um, uh, sort of breakdown of how, how he's, he's evaluated. And I'm not going to assign stars or... Or try to say, but I'm just you know giving the album some fresh sprint spins recently, giving it maybe putting it in a, in a different light, and why I've sort of reevaluated this album. Now, like I said, I'm not I'm not ranking it up there with with some of my favorite McCartney records, like 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 I said, back um, Band on the Run, um, Ram, uh, what I call those classic McCartney albums. But I do have have sort of given it a better status than it had you know maybe two months ago. Um, I definitely think the, the, there, 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 there's a couple of problems with this album. And the reason why, in my mind, it probably got kind of relegated to a lower ranking. Uh, one of those reasons was likely that um, there's no major hit on this album. Uh, when you talk about classic McCartney and you look at McCartney uh, compilations of, of big hits, uh, he doesn't play any of these songs live um, in any of his concerts, and it has not. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure there were songs that were on the radio at the time the album came out, but I'm talking those classic Maybe I'm Amazed, Band on the Run, Jet. Those songs that you hear when you play classic rock radio, you don't hear any of these songs. There's, there's, not, there's a lack of this sort of runaway major classic McCartney big time hit on this album. But pretty much every McCartney has at least, McCartney solo album or Wings album has at least one of these kinds of songs on it. This one doesn't. Um, and like I said, I'm not talking about songs that may have been hits at the time and there may be something that pops up now, now and again on, on I don't, to be honest, I don't listen to a lot of radio. So there may be some stuff you guys can, can dispute that down in the comments. But um, 
But that's one of the major problems, I think, with this album. It just doesn't... Like, if you were picking this up and you were a casual McCartney fan and you picked this album up in a record store and looked at the back and looked at the track listing, you'd probably be like, I don't know any of these songs. I'm not familiar with, with any of them. I don't associate any of these songs with, with McCartney. Um, the other problem to me is that the second side, the over-easy side, starts to really lag down a lot. But about halfway through, you start to go... And then the album kind of loses loses its edge, which I know is by design. The sunny side up, which is which is the more upbeat, cheery, and then the over easy, and it kind of kind of kind of devolves into this sort of schmaltzy kind of kind of thing, uh, which is weird because it opens with this the rockestra theme, which is this big, huge, huge thing. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go track by track on the album. Um, it opens with this little thing called reception. It's sort of a, a concept piece. It's like you're dialing in on a radio reception and then, uh, getting closer, which I think is, uh, is, is just a great McCartney upbeat, just, uh, driving kind of song. Um, I have no idea. I mean, the, the lyric, uh, you say you don't love me, my salamander. I, I don't know, but it's got a great beat, a, a, a catchy hook. Uh, and it and it works. And then it goes into We're Open Tonight, which is more of a low-key, I kind of would compare it to a Venus and Mars, this sort of low-key kind of uh, kind of easygoing track. Um, but then it picks up with Spin It On, which is really fast, very new wavy uh, sounding, um, just a, just a uh, kind of McCartney's foray into, and I won't say punk music because McCartney never... McCartney couldn't pull off punk if, if he tried, I, I don't think. But it, it definitely has this sort of aggressive, upbeat tempo. Um, spin it on. And then again and again and again, which is a song um, that... Uh, that's a Denny Lane song. Uh, and it's actually one of the better Denny Lane tracks to me. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a decent song. Uh, but again, it's, it's, you know, anytime any, any other writer steps up in Wings... They just don't match the, the melodic abilities of, of McCartney. Um, I mean, this band was bound to collapse under the weight of its own leader. Um, and so um, it's not a terrible song. It just, to me, it's, it's a Denny Lane song. It, it is what it is. But Old Siam Sir um, is just, to me, a great rocker. I love McCartney's vocal on it. And uh, it's just this, this, this fun, just, just killer track. And then the next one to me is one that that really I've I've, I've grown to love. Um, is it Oh Heavenly Dog? It was the uh, one of the Benji movies uh, with uh, with uh, Chevy Chase, I believe. Arrow Threw Me was the, the the kind of associated with that movie, and of course it's kind of a forgotten film now. But uh, at the time when it came out, um, it was it was kind of a prominent song. And if, if there is a hit on this album, it's probably Arrow Threw Me, maybe. Uh, but it's it's this funky little tune that never really struck me, but I've I've really really grown to appreciate it uh, in in recent listens. Um, it's 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 a really cool track. It's got this funky horn line that really to me is almost like a Stevie Wonder type lick. And of course, McCartney and, and Stevie Wonder obviously there there was some inspiration and, and trading going on there, but but it does have this feel of a. Uh, um, uh, like that that horn line in particular that that plays has has a Stevie Wonder vibe. Um, so side one to me is is about as solid as you can get as, on a, on a McCartney solo album or a Wings album. Um, it's it's really really good. And then you get to side two, and this is again part of the problem with the album. Side two it opens with the Rockestra theme, which for all its bombast and, and hugeness. Um, you would think, oh, we've got Pete Townsend, we've got we've got um, uh, Dave Gilmore, we've got John Bonham. You would think this would be like this ultimate super group of of greatness, and you kind of end up with like just this just sort of big song, um, which may have been the idea, but it, you know, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's 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 not. I don't think it's supposed to be taken seriously. And so I don't. Um, I think it was supposed to be big fun, and and it comes across that way. Um, 
and then and then the album just to me just starts to starts to to no, nosedive to you after the ball a million miles uh, winter lows rose love away the broadcast kind of kind of is a throwback to the opening reception so glad to see you here in baby's request so it turns into this sort of uh, light light sort of sounding album and so and that's where it kind of ends so the the second side is pretty much. Uh, forgettable, um, which is which is problematic. But I guess if you're gonna gonna load up a record, um, put all your put all the front load it. I mean, put all the put all the stuff right on side one, and 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 let that be let that be the punch. Um, so back to the egg, uh, reevaluating it. Uh, I would say it's an above average McCartney album. Um, my view on it has softened, uh, you know, recently because of because of the. Uh, because of the uh, just the just the you know recent listens have 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 given me a, just a softer view on it. Like I said, it's not not the most brilliant thing, but uh, I definitely would rank it ahead of particularly Wings albums, probably a lot of Wings albums. Uh, so don't let the lack of hits scare you off from this album. Um, as particularly side one or the first first part of the album, I think think you'll find some really really nice nice treasures in there. Uh, so what do you think about Back to the Egg? Comment down below. Let me know. Uh, I love to interact with you guys. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe, washing your hands, and 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 socially distancing. And, and you know, we're going to get through this together. We just, you know, I, I know you're tired of hearing it's a broken record, but we have to do it. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, take care of your loved ones, take care of your families, and uh, take care of each other. Um, it's great to do videos and talk music. It's great to get caught up and listen to some stuff. So, uh so what do you think? Back to the egg. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You know the routine. Hit that bell. Uh, get notified when there's new content. Um, the other side of this, too, in addition to listening to records, I'm actually getting caught up on watching some of your videos, which is which is great for me because I've really fallen behind in that. So, um, so I'm checking in with you guys as well. Um, so um, we'll see you soon with, with some more content. And uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. Good night.